like this seems kind of uh, vaguely ludicrous and completely unattainable. Hey yo, what's up guys, DP here and welcome back to another PUBG news and information video. We've got a lot of stuff that we have to discombobulate in this update and it has weapon balancing, all kinds of weapon updates, not to mention a new car, a new gun. So we have a lot of stuff to cover including a lot of bug fixes and of course we finally get map selection. Now if you own PUBG, you don't even have to watch this video, you can go right now on the test servers and play all these updates live. But if you don't have the game or you just not home to play it don't worry i got all the juicy details and i got you covered all right let's get all the important stuff out of the way first and i'm talking about weapon balancing uh, he's, uh, he's this is something that i could talk about ad nauseum it's one of my specialities and after reading the dev blog, the one before this one, I kind of figured that they were going to come out with some kind of a system where you could specialize in a certain weapon Now, of course, they don't want any one gun to rule them all, so to speak, and they want everyone to have their personality shine when it comes to weapon selection as well. So different folks, different strokes, and that's what I think they're looking to do with this new weapon balancing template. So they've increased the overall damage of all pistols by five, except for the Glock. Now, I'm assuming that's probably because the Glock is the only one that has full auto. It's only been increased by two. It would be a little bit overpowered if they actually gave it the full five points of damage. Both the double barrel under over the S686 and the pump action shotgun have got reduced damage now. It's been reduced from 25 to 24, but what I don't understand it's, is that shotguns usually worked off of pellet damage, so I'm still trying to figure this one out. Leave me a comment down below and explain this to me, because as of now, I thought pellet damage is what was important, and each pellet did 9 points of damage. So correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below, guys, uh, and let me know how the 25 to 24 point system works. Now, when it comes to shotguns, they've reduced the pellet spread by about 25%. I'm assuming that they've maybe added an effective more range on shotguns. That's what I would really like to see, is shotguns having a little bit more effective range. They've also increased the damage that you do when you hit a limb shot. So limb modifications have been increased a little bit. Also, you can now put a choke on a sawed off shotgun, which IMO has been a long time coming. They've also increased the damage on all SMGs by a little bit, except for the Tommy gun. So the Micro Uzi, the UMP, and the Vector all get one extra point of damage. And they've also increased the limb shot modifier as well with the SMG. So effectively, you'll be doing more damage if you hit a shoulder, a knee, or maybe even an elbow. Now, honestly, I don't know how that works yet, but we're going to have to jump into the test servers and do the testing ourselves. But if you've already done that and you know what the increase on the limb modification, I'm talking about exact numbers. If you know what the exact numbers are, then please leave them down in the comments below. I'd really like to check out the limb modification increased damage. I think they're driving by. Roll it. So essentially, SMGs are getting a bit of a buff in this patch. They've decreased the vertical recoil on all SMGs. They've also decreased the recoil and scope sway when moving in ADS, and they've also increased the ADS transition speed. I'm gonna call it here first, guys. I think that this patch, or after this patch, we're gonna see a lot of people with SMGs in final circle. All right, let's get into the juicy ARs. It seems like what they're trying to tell us is that you're not gonna be able to just pick up an M4 every single time, every single round now. I think with weapon balancing, people want you to use the AKM, the SCAR, the AUG, the Groza, and try out different weapons and see what suits you best for the recoil or for the amount of attachments that you can put on it for the customization. So there's a lot of changes to AR. I'm going to try and cover all of them. So right away, you can tell that this patch is favoring the AKM. They've decreased the damage on all of the 5.56 platforms. The M16, the SCAR, the AUG, the M4. They've all got one point reduced damage. They've increased the reload time on the SCAR-L, the M4, the M16 by 30%. They've also increased the reload time on the AKM by 10%. They've increased the vertical and horizontal recoil on all ARs except for the AKM. They've decreased the recoil rate on all ARs and they've also added in a new recoil animation. Now the best part about all this, the one that really got me is that you cannot use an eight times anymore on an AR. They are really pushing you onto a sniper platform if you want to use an eight times. This is going to put ARs at a huge disadvantage. I'm not talking about final circle. I'm actually talking about during the middle of the round or beginning of the round 
and uh, especially in squad matches and if RNG is not in your favor and you just don't get a sniper rifle you're gonna be at a huge disadvantage in some of your squad fights all right moving on to the DMRs I really feel like blue hole hates the SKS with every patch and every update there's a new nerf coming to the SKS I feel like it's closer and closer to the door not only did it get a huge decrease in damage but they've also added in more horizontal and vertical recoil now that's with all DMRs but at least with the VSS and the mini it got a little bit of a damage boost they've also increased the head body and limb shot modifiers for all DMRs they've decreased the recoil recovery rate of all DMRs and they've also added in new recoil animations for all DMRs and speaking of DMRs the new gun the SLR you guys already know we were the first ones to call it here on this channel the STG 58 SLR and I made that video almost a, a month and a half ago and uh, predicting that that would be the new gun and I just want to say thank you to my awesome community and you guys on discord that make all these predictions possible if you guys missed that video I'll leave a link for it right meow so here's some of my thoughts on the new weapon the SLR I feel like it's gonna be the new replacement for the SKS because it definitely hits harder and it's gonna have a bit more recoil but the fact that it can be found anywhere in the world on all three maps I think it's gonna be a substitute to the old SKS. I don't know. What do you guys think? If you've already tried the gun and you have a feel for it, let me know down in the comments below of whether or not it's even worth the substitute for the SKS. All right. And lastly, let's talk about the LMGs. The DP28, which got a little bit more of a buff by two points, and the SAW, the M249, which got a damage buff of one point. They've also added in the same eight times scope restriction on both of the LMGs. Now, one thing I wanted to touch on before we move on to other topics as far as weapon balancing goes is that they've added more passive sway I'm talking about just regularly when you're trying to aim down sights you're gonna be swaying a little bit more to your left and right so they've added that in there and holding your breath uh, isn't gonna make you completely stable but there is gonna be a sort of slight passive sway still in there if you wanted to reduce the effect of the sway you now have to effectively use a cheek pad so weapon sway when moving uh, is now also reduced by the cheek pad attachment and cheek pads can help you recover from weapon sway more quickly after moving. All right, let's talk about throwables. The frag grenades, which we already experienced on the experimental test servers, they've definitely changed them a little bit and they've added in more uh, explosion effects and deafening sounds. So the animation for the frag grenades and the explosion and damage effects have also been changed. Now, previously grenade damage was greatly dependent on the fall damage rather than the explosion. They've changed it now so that the knockback effect does not affect the player anymore and have adjusted all the other explosion damage that applies to somebody getting struck by a grenade. I think in other words what they're trying to say is that you're not going to get knocked around uh, with a grenade like we used to be and get ridiculous amounts of fall damage. I think you're just going to be standing in place and you'll get damaged from the grenade. You won't get pushed out of cover uh, like it is right now. Also the weight of the grenades have been changed from 12 to 18 so that just tells you they don't want you carrying around around six and seven grenades in final circle so it makes it much harder to carry grenades and the weight of all the other grenades actually have been reduced by two so smoke grenades will cost uh, 14 instead of 16 and stun grenades cost even less at 12 weight all right a couple of big things that we need to touch on as far as character movement and this is also going to come into effect when it comes to gun selection you're going to have a slightly decreased movement speed when holding srs sniper rifles lmgs which is the m249 and the dp28 and shotguns so basically what they're trying to say is that the weapon that you carry in your hand is going to affect your run speed not the one on your back chambering a new round in certain weapons like the m24 the car 98 or the pump action shotgun no longer limit you to walking speed while aiming down sights they've also added in something called camera shake and that depends on the amount of damage that you take from the caliber of round that hits you for some of you that don't recognize or understand what i'm talking about it is a function that we had in arma 3 in the arma 3 engine and every time you would get hit, it would make it that much harder for you to hit your target back, meaning your sway would be incredibly huge. All right, let's talk about some item balancing. Level three helmets now only spawn in care packages, along with sniper rifle quick draw magazines and sniper rifle extended quick draw magazines. They've also reduced the spawn rate for AR extended quick draw magazines, and now the DMRs will use AR attachments, which is the magazines, compensators, etc., along with sniper rifle attachments. They've also added in the 
adrenaline syringe uh, to the common loot all over the map, but it's going to be a very rare spawn, and they've adjusted the time on the syringe now from the initial six seconds to eight seconds. All right, next up, I'm going to be reading through some of the attachments that have been added to the test servers. The first one is the duck bill. It's obviously for the shotguns. It reduces the vertical pellet spread, but increases the horizontal bullet spread. The light grip. It reduces recoil recovery time, but increases the vertical and horizontal recoil. It's an attachment for all ARs, SMGs, and DMRs. The thumb grip. It reduces vertical recoil, but increases horizontal recoil. It also increases the recoil recovery time. And lastly, the half grip. It reduces the vertical and horizontal recoil and also reduces recoil recovery time. So it's kind of like the one that's in between. Again, this one also is attachable to all ARs, SMGs, and DMRs. Now they've also added in a scope, which is a three times, it's a brand new scope and uh, it can be found anywhere it's a common world drop and lastly a six times scope now this scope is a variable from a three times to a six times magnification and it's a rare world spawn but i'm guessing that this is probably something that you would find at the military base or prison or even hacienda it's one of those places where you're gonna have to go and risk it for the biscuit also before i forget you can now finally change the reticle on the red dot and the hollow and you can change the color of the reticle on the two times uh, using your zeroing up and zeroing down keys. Now the two biggest parts of the update besides the new gun, the SLR, is a new muscle car that's going to be added to Myanmar. It's called the Murado. It is a high octane muscle car that's supposed to be the fastest car on the road, uh, aside from the bike of course, and uh, I'm sure that uh, it's going to be a, a welcome addition to the Myanmar map. It greatly needs a muscle car or a faster car besides the off-road and the tank, which is the party bus. And lastly, we finally get map selection yes boys and girls map selection is finally here you can now choose between Myanmar and Arangel and we no longer have to play the map roulette that we have been playing for so long and it's just gonna force blue hole to make uh, the world and environment a whole lot better for Myanmar which is also in the patch where they've added in more buildings and stuff to the oasis area and uh, there's a whole lot of other bug fixes and stuff that are in the Steam Notes, guys. I'll leave them over here for you on the screen if you want to read them. There'll also be a link to everything down in the description below. I feel like this video has gone on for long enough as it is. I just want to end by saying thank you all so much to my, my donos, my sponsors, to all the people, my subs that make these videos possible. And if you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. If you disliked the video, leave it a dislike. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below of this patch and this new update. I think that weapons are gonna need a refixing, but that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? As always, stay strong and I'll see you 